Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the course entitled Symmetry, Stereochemistry and Applications. In the previous class, we were discussing about the optical activity and isomerism. So, in this context, we would like to start talking about the as terms asymmetry and dissymmetry. So, there is, there, there is a need to define these two terms and identify the difference between asymmetry and dissymmetry. See, as, as early as in 1860, Louis Pasteur used the term dissymmetry in his lecture, Researcher sur la dissymmetric molecule des produces organic naturals, which essentially means that the essential organic materials can have dissymmetric molecules. So, before uh, Pasteur's uh, identification of dissymmetric molecules, tartaric acid derived from tartar was one of the compound examined by uh, Biot in his early days for optical activity. It was observed that one isomer showed positive optical rotation and the other isomer termed as para tartaric acid did not show any optical rotation, which means that was a racemic mixture. So, the terms asymmetry and dissymmetry need to be distinguished using appropriate examples. So, in this uh, lecture, in this class today, we will discuss about asymmetry and dissymmetry and we will try to address these three important questions. The first question is whether the dissymmetry and asymmetry are synonyms, whether Pasteur used the word dissymmetric cautiously, whether Pasteur used the word dissymmetric just to indicate the meaning not symmetric that is the lack of symmetry. So, to start the discussion today, I would like to draw your attention to this very simple table, which will be very useful in understanding this topic of asymmetry and dissymmetry. As you can understand from here that we are trying to understand the difference between a symmetric molecule, a dissymmetric molecule and an asymmetric molecule. So, when we try to identify a molecule, whether it is symmetric, dissymmetric or asymmetric, we look for the presence of alternating axis of symmetry. That means, we look for the presence of some kind of S n. So, if we see in a molecule there is a one of those S n is present, then we look for whether the molecule has any simple axis of symmetry that is C n. And then we infer that if these two are present or C n may or may not be present, then the symmetric molecule will be optically inactive. That means, it will not rotate the plane of plane polarized light. But when we look at a dissymmetric molecule, the first thing that we find is that the absence of S n, but a dissymmetric molecule may have C n where n is greater than 1. And in general, usually these molecules are optically active. In case of asymmetric compound, asymmetric molecule, it does not have S n, it does not have C n with n greater than 1, which essentially means this has only C n. And these molecules are also usually active. You see the term that we are using usually because we will see towards the end of this lecture that an asymmetric molecule also may not be optically active. So, let us see three examples of three different types of molecules. Here the first one is propionic acid and its mirror image. What is propionic acid? It is 
a 3 carbon acid with CH2 in between. This and the corresponding mirror image can be drawn like this. What we see here is that this molecule has S1 axis that is present and as a result this molecule is symmetric molecule. Although it does not have any C n that is C n greater than 2 it has C 1 of course. The second molecule that we look at is trans 1 2 dichlorocyclopropane. So, let us draw the molecules first. When we say trans that means these two groups have chlorine atom at two opposite points. So, this is the trans 1 2 dichlorocyclopropane. This carbon and that carbon both are chiral centers because each one of those have four different groups attached to it. And if we take the corresponding mirror image what we get is this one. What do we see in this molecule? We see that this particular molecule has a C 2 axis passing through the middle of the bond and containing the third carbon atom. And what we see about these two mirror images? These two mirror Im images are non superimposable. So, therefore, these two are disymmetric molecules, these two are enantiomers and they are optically active. So, here what we have is a C presence of C 2 axis, but we do not have S n. So, this is the condition for a disymmetric molecule that it will not have S n, but it can have a have any other proper axis of symmetry like C 2. Let us see the third case of 2 butanol and its mirror image. So, what we see here is that this particular molecule has only C 1 there is no S n and there is no other symmetry element like C 2, C 3 or whatever and these two mirror images are non superimposable. Therefore, this molecule is a chiral compound and this is optically active. So, this particular molecule propionic acid is symmetric. This molecule trans 1 2 dichloropropane is disymmetric and this molecule can be termed as asymmetric. Hope you can understand the difference between symmetric, disymmetric and asymmetric molecules. So, to simplify this understanding I would like to draw your attention to this flow chart. So, when we look at a molecule, we first look for the presence of S n. If the molecule contains S n, we call it as an achiral molecule or a symmetric molecule. If 
if the molecule does not have any SN, we call it as a chiral compound, but a specific name is given to this compound as desymmetric. So, this chiral compound can have C n with n equal to 1 or C n with n greater than 1 that is 2, 3 and so on and can have D n as well which means if you have a C 2 you can have 3 perpendicular C 2s and so on. But if you do not have C n then it becomes asymmetric compound. So, hope this chart clear clarifies the doubt between the disymmetric and asymmetric molecules. So, now if we try to define these uh, terms like a chiral, a chiral is assigned to a, an entity such as a molecule which is a chiral if it is superimposable with its mirror image. A chiral molecule is not superimposable with mirror image as applied to molecules, conformations as well as macroscopic objects such as crystals. When we discuss about the solid the symmetry in the solid state, we will see there are chiral space groups that defines different types of crystals. Then the next type of molecule can be termed as disymmetric, it is actually an obsolete synonym of chiral which essentially means not equivalent to asymmetric since disymmetric or chiral entities may possess C n axis with n greater than 1. The asymmetric molecules are those which are lacking all elements of symmetry other than the identity symmetry or C 1 and they all belong to the point group C 1. So, if we try to look at this molecule lactic acid, what we see here that the molecule does not have any uh, alternating axis of symmetry that means, there is no S n, there is no C n, n greater than 1. So, this molecule is an asymmetric compound and the corresponding mirror image is non superimposable with the original compound. So, this one representation x and representation y are non superimposable mirror images. So, they are enantiomeric pairs of lactic acid hence they are optically active. Let us see the case of another molecule. 3,6-dimethyl piperazine 2,5-dione in its cis form what we see here is that the methyl groups are upwards and the corresponding mirror image has the cis forms upwards, but this group and that group have changed their positions because of mirror image relationship. So, what happens in this we see that it contains a C 2 axis because this C 2 passing through the center of the molecule. So, by rotating this molecule about the C 2 axis we get the same orientation of the groups, but it does not have any S n. So, we term this molecule as a disymmetric molecule and hence this becomes optically active because these mirror images are non superimposable. See the point of uh, optical activity comes from the non superimposability of mirror images. Let us see the case with the trans uh, isomer of this particular compound. So, what we see here that the trans compound has methyl groups up and down. As a result, this molecule contains an inversion center. So, this molecule is a symmetric molecule and hence this molecule is optically 
inactive. All symmetric molecules are optically inactive. Therefore, in this case we do not need to draw the mirror image and see whether they are superimposable or not. Here we get take one more example of a compound called twistain. You can easily understand the bonding present here. You have carbon atoms at every point and they are in a twisted conditions and all of them are sp3 hybridized carbon. So, what we see in this molecule that there is a C 2 axis like this, there is a second C 2 perpendicular to the first C 2 and there is a third C 2 like that perpendicular to the first C 2. So, there is one C 2 and two perpendicular C 2s which make it a point group D 2. But what we see is that this molecule does not have any S n axis. So, when we do not have S n, but we have C 2 and per perpendicular C 2 s make it D 2, this molecule is a disymmetric molecule, but is a chiral molecule. So, this molecule is supposed to be optically active, because if you take the mirror image of this compound, you will see that the mirror image is non superimposable with the original compound. Let us try to draw the mirror image and show it to you. So, if I try to draw the mirror image on the right hand side, what we should have is our the groups like this. The connectivity that is important between these two is now between these two groups. The bond which was above the plane of the paper or above the plane of the projection is now in this orientation and the bond which was below the plane of presentation projection here is now here. And what we see is that these two are non superimposable mirror images and therefore, this compound is chiral and optically active. Now, the question is we would like to address are all the asymmetric or disymmetric compounds optically active? Let us see with a slightly complicated example of a, a molecule. What we see here in this molecule there are multiple chiral centers on either side and here we have a restricted rotation about this bond. It is a 1 to 1 prime 2 prime di substitute uh, tetra substituted biphenyl system. And if we take a mirror Im image of this molecule, what we see that you generate this molecule. So, this molecule does not have any symmetry element other than C 1 as you can see. So, this molecule must be an asymmetric molecule and hence may have optical activity. Now, if we look at the mirror images very carefully, the mirror images apparently look non superimposable by rotation, but by rotation around the C C bond by rotation about this bond by 90 degree, the molecules can be superimposed. If you rotate the molecule about this axis by 90 degree, what we see is the same as the left hand side. So, by 90 degree rotation of the molecule about that bond makes it superimposable on one another. Therefore, this molecule is optically inactive molecule. So, this is one example of asymmetric molecule, but optically inactive. So, we will start uh, discussing about topicity of ligands and faces 
in the next lecture.